Good afternoon. I'm here with James Hogan, who is an experienced senior executive of the aviation industry. James served as president and chief executive most recently of Etihad Aviation Group. And in 2017, he was celebrated by the Australian government with an officer of the Order of Australia for uh, recognition of his leadership in aviation. James today serves as, as chairman of Knighthood Capital Partners. James, good afternoon. You're on. Good afternoon to you. James, change brings huge opportunity in business. When we think about COVID-19, what new opportunities do you foresee for the aviation sector, specifically in Africa? Well, I think crisis in any sector always brings opportunity to restructure. And one of the things that aviation has to tackle regularly is whether it be economic, whether it be oil, whether it be war, whether it be pandemic, there is crisis they have to adapt to. COVID-19 is, is unique. And I think you need to carve up the world. And certainly in Europe and America, we're seeing an approach to the established carriers. Whereas in, in, in Africa, I think this presents a, a unique opportunity. Ethiopian Airways have, have done a very good job in building a very strong um, Pan-African airline, one could call it a global airline. Nevertheless, they're probably the, the only winner. But for many other African countries, because the cost of entry and the barriers have been so high in the past, I believe this presents unique opportunities because whether it be government or part private ownership, this is the window to take advantage of what the challenge brings. And what do I mean by that? I mean the, the cost of entry, aircraft, um, manpower, uh, availability of pilots. So in this crisis, it throws up many opportunities to start with a clean sheet of paper. Now, obviously, uh, in, in any crisis, there are going to be um, airlines that are going to find it very hard to tackle. They're going to have to downsize. Some will go out of business. I think Africa, and you, you mentioned earlier, I, I have been in aviation a long time. With the various groups I've been involved in in the past, we always saw Africa as a continent. If there was proper structure, they were going to be the winners long term. Because aviation is about key factors. It's about population, it's about people, and it's about connectivity. Africa certainly got plenty of people, but what is lacking is, is, is connectivity. So with this clean sheet of paper, I see a unique window for African carriers, whether they be country owned or whether they be private, to re-emerge and become competitors domestically regionally and and build a springboard for mid-haul long-haul operations moving forward so james some of that change where do you think it's going to come from is it you know there's been a lot of conversation in the press about renegotiating of payroll structures within south african airways that's obviously been very public and um, secondly as you mentioned there's you know, we were all sitting waiting to see when aviation will recommence if you like in Africa so that means when does Emirates come back in Kenya's talking about getting airborne internationally from the first of, of August Ethiopia has been trying to maintain some kind of um, schedule or, or structure across the continent throughout COVID so all, all recognition to the hard work they have done but obviously things like payrolls changing cost of fuel has clearly changed during COVID is there any other kind of substantial change that you think is going to have an impact upon the current players in aviation and maybe who would maybe come in as new entries post COVID? Well, I don't want to comment so much on specific airlines, but you know, one reads about the challenges the larger airlines have. Um, and, and this is a time for airline stakeholders, management and employees to come together. 
because the old rule book isn't sustainable moving forward. And we've already seen in some countries where as they've downsized, they've moved to new productivity agreements with uh, pilots. Um, that's a key area of focus because, grand, because pilot rights have been grandfathered in the past. And what may have been relevant 30 years ago isn't relevant today. And that's been driven by the emergence of low cost airlines. So productivity, the, the ability to work your pilots efficiently, and the same on, on the ground and uh, when it comes to associated services. So I think the opportunity for airlines now is to rework those agreements, to outsource what is in core. And you and I, many years ago, both worked in, well, I worked in the hotel industry and you're still in that sector, but you know, we could have a, a, a major property with four restaurants and one kitchen. Now the problem today with airlines, they duplicate the overhead. And certainly I, I, I believe you'll see the argument for more call center outsourcing, revenue accounting, uh, training, because the smaller airlines have found it very difficult to absorb the overhead of running, whether it's a low cost or a full service airline. So I see major structural changes to the, to the cost base, to certainly the employee agreements to be much more productivity, much more flexibility. And then what is in core, outsource and share that with other African airlines. You know, what what stops having a resource center for small, mid-sized airlines in Africa so they're sharing the back room? You're able to keep the, through technology, uh, you're able to manage the departure control systems, the, the revenue management systems to, to protect confidentiality, but there are elements which, quite frankly, can be stripped out and make the actually operating airline more efficient. If one considers with aviation, you know, traditionally the airports have been extremely profitable, the support services companies have been extremely profitable, and the airlines have suffered. So, you know, the cost base needs to be reworked. And then the other big issue is obviously regulation. Um, open skies in Africa, I, I, I think this really pushes the, the opportunity for a more liberal approach for open skies in Africa. Um, cost of ownership on aircraft uh, is probably going to be the lowest we've seen for quite some time. So uh, that means old aircraft, inefficient aircraft can be retired. You can be able to take advantage of new technology and work much smarter. So I think the winners here in, in Africa, whether it's entrepreneurial or uh, startups, whether it's private companies or even government airlines that say, well, we do have the opportunity for a clean sheet of paper. This is a time to take advantage of all these elements that are going to be there for the next two, three years, but won't be there past that. So it's the people who move fast and say, okay, what we've done in the past, let's tear that up. Let's get that clean sheet of paper and, and, and move forward. Because aviation is a economic enabler. So good airlines, good connectivity, efficient airports have a major impact on the economy and investment. So it's about people with vision and courage to take advantage of this window, in my opinion. So would you see, you know, in some sectors, um, Africa, arguably, we've seen, for instance, impasse with regard to innovation of transactions and payments away from heart from use of cash. Secondly, we've seen it within uh, maybe in the medical sector, some of the community health provisions that the continent has trailblazed versus other 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 markets. So that there's there's clearly some of that innovations happened in other sectors. James, do you maybe think that now there will be an opportunity where because the barriers to entry will change? You've mentioned the figure to maybe leasing deals and the structure of ownership of accessing. Uh, aircraft is going to change. Does that mean that some of that entrepreneurial energy that's available in the constant, some of those skills that are available already can now be reutilized, if you like, or, or start to naturally uh, remold aviation in Africa? Well, before the barriers were just too great. There was too many examples of people who tried and failed. The cost of cash was just too great. Do you genuinely think that that, that, that shift has happened and now 
new opportunity is different from probably before. This is a, a kind of a new era. Look, I think it's a very good point that you make. There's considerable success in other sectors in Africa of innovation, entrepreneurship. But one of the challenges in, in aviation has been the government ownership. And there's still the opportunity for governments to step back and be the shareholder and not see the airline as a public utility. And I think this is the opportunity for entrepreneurs to step forward, to work in conjunction with governments. But what is important is that public utility mentality, whether it be um, jobs, whether it be transparency, this is the time because when the rest of the world looks at aviation and we've seen this uh, with safety, um, where, you know, IATA and IOSA, there's, there's stringent regulation in regard to transparency in regard to safety. And this has to move right across the, the business. You know, it's like anything in, in any business, whether it's hotels, whether it's car rental, whether it's airlines, whether it's uh, any form of hospitality, uh, investors need to see uh, a clear roadmap number one they need to see the, pro uh, the proper structure with the balance sheet and if there's borrowings and if there's a government ownership they need to see the transparency and the hands off and uh, the biggest step change i i believe for the government owned airlines is to for the government to step back and be an investor uh, bring in um other national companies or entrepreneurs to you know protect the flag carrier status but it's time i think for um true proper business practice to be introduced as one can take advantage of this change during the next you know as i say 12 24 36 months i don't see it much longer than that because like any business you know we we start to to reinvent you, you said it a moment ago other entrants will continue to come into the market and return to the market so here's an opportunity for africa who certainly has the talent has the you know the the, the people i've met the uh, i've been incredibly impressed with the 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 pilots the engineers the talent is there but it's how one harnesses it to take advantage of uh, the crisis and how you come through the crisis james when we when we both worked at, at forty hotels you were kind of renowned for your catchphrase which was always about share market share always about scale you know now when you when you sit there from a from a knighthood capital perspective are you able to, to help governments and private enterprise achieve scale and get that collaboration to work across the continent so that some of these risks can be, can be shared across border, can be shared by governments, can be shared by institutions, so, that you, so everybody has a chance? Uh, because so often in aviation, the return cycle is so long versus the short-term cost of cash. It almost makes it impossible to succeed. So. Do you see a route through to, to help create an apparatus where investors, banks, uh, governments can establish scale robust enough that they can sustain that for the medium to long term? Look, uh, I, you and I certainly do. Um, in fact, the hotel sector is a good example of many years ago um, when multi-brands would all duplicate their, their their head office infrastructure revenue management uh purchasing function and then over a period of time that became central in most functions um in our business we we have a call center for example in uh in malta we have a revenue management uh center where we're already doing work for many airlines and as i mentioned earlier i believe there is a unique opportunity for the airlines to come together i call it the airline in the box where the box has all those common systems where you provide those for a cost per sector and that brings down the overhead uh it makes it more efficient but think but but part of training um training for service staff training for engineers there are many ways that can be pulled into centers of excellence and with vision, uh, I certainly believe that can be, be achieved. Even aircraft trading, the ability to move aircraft um, 
from a seasonal perspective into different parts of the country. So you're getting a more effective utilization. But uh, the opportunity for Africa is that it is underserviced. Um, it isn't as mature as the European aviation environment. There's an emerging middle class. People want to travel, people are aspirational, and uh, they expect a safe airline. They expect an airline that provides good service and provides good value. So the environment has to be one to ensure that those cost of entry barriers of the past are reduced or there's more focus on scale and being more efficient so airlines can get off there, uh, can get established and have, quite frankly, a, a better path moving forward. And there's some of the internal issues like airports and you know, some of the domestic stakeholders in looking at how you have a commercial business unconstrained, as I said a little bit earlier, instead of being a public utility. Public utilities are constrained. An unconstrained business with a government shareholder, not a problem, um, can work. And we've seen that in, in, in other markets. James, it is great to, to hear your enthusiasm. Um, clearly, you see an opportunity from what is a terrible uh, pandemic that we're all enduring today. And, and let's hope that some of those opportunities you think that will come out of uh, the COVID-19 situation can be capitalised upon. Um, and as many of us travel around the continent, we all yearn for the day where we have that ability to have the connectivity that so many other markets in the world enjoy and just take for granted. So, you know, thank you very much for your insights. And uh, please, let's, let's hope you're successful and, and, and can unlock that, you know, that aviation opportunity for the continent of Africa. Thanks, you, and Thank you for your time. It's, it's a pleasure to be involved. Thank you. Keep safe. Thank you. All the best.